I just want to go home. This is 18-year-old Helen Hastings. When they became besties with a TikTok famous cosplayer named Snow the Salt Queen, their mother and friends had their doubts. But they wanted Helen to be happy and supported Helen's newfound friendship. Sadly, Helen would never get to graduate from college or fulfill their dreams. Instead, their new best friend took their life. Then, she continued to gain TikTok fame. How was this possible? And why did Snow unalive Helen? We'll explore these questions and many more in today's video. In January 2021, Helen Hastings was getting ready for a fresh start in life and a future filled with opportunities, dreams, and friends. They had been studying neuroscience, psychology, and art at Oberlin College, an hour outside Cleveland, Ohio. On weekends, they would play Dungeons and Dragons or listen to the podcast My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Helen's teenage years had been tough, but they were happier now. At the age of 18, their Siberian therapy cat Willa was keeping them company at college, and they were making new close friends who really seemed to cherish Helen. This is what made the following incident truly shocking. In the early hours of Sunday, January 17th, 2021, Helen's parents, Susan and Philip, received a phone call. Their daughter was in the hospital on life support. Helen had a bullet wound in the head. The situation was dire. Helen was on life support, not because their life could be saved, but because they'd signed an organ donor card. The hospital was waiting to find a recipient for their organs. Susan said about the MRI scan of her daughter's brain, that was it, there was just not much there. As Helen's parents were trying to come to terms with the reality, a couple of officers told them what had happened that night. Helen's best friend, Mary Ann Oliver Snow, had pulled the trigger. Helen's family couldn't believe it. Helen had just moved in with Mary Ann. It made no sense. Also, Helen had not been raised with weapons in the house. They would have stayed away from gun enthusiasts. What's more, just weeks before, Philip had asked Helen if Snow and their friends kept any weapons inside the house. Helen had said no, though the witness statements later revealed that this was not the first time Marianne or their housemates had played with a gun. What really led to Helen's death? The hospital wanted the family to wait three days to find organ recipients. Susan said they could wait for exactly two. That was as much as the family could bear. I was never gonna see her again. I wanted to just hold her hand. Susan sat by Helen's bedside for two days, singing them Beatles songs and telling them how much she loved them. Helen was taken off of life support and pronounced dead at 5.18 p.m. on January 19th. Helen Rose Hastings was the only daughter of Philip Hastings and Susan Rosenberg, born and raised in Houston, Texas. Philip and Susan were highly successful biologists working at Baylor College of Medicine. Philip had been married twice before and had four sons from his previous marriages. Susan was in her 40s and Philip was in his 60s. However, Helen's parents put their whole energy into spending time with Helen and helping them develop into a smart, independent adult. As a toddler, Helen was already very smart, speaking in full sentences by the time they were just 18 months old. Their childhood was a whirlwind of extracurricular activities, swimming, theater, chorus, rock band camp, and robotics. Bailey, their childhood bestie, said, She was a person who was everywhere at the same time, but also very centered and grounded. There was no correlation between the things she was interested in. She seemed like she wanted to know everything. Helen's parents knew that children should be encouraged to explore all their passions, not pushed down a fixed route that embodies their parents' dream. Helen spent their breaks traveling with Susan and Philip on the lecture circuit, going to far-flung places like Norway, Croatia, and Japan. When they were seven, Helen decided their career goal, starting an institute for women scientists in Japan. Their future seemed bright, but everything changed when Helen entered middle school, and it was all because they were severely bullied. One of the reasons was their small stature, as they grew to just under 5'1". Why on earth that would be an issue with anyone is hard to comprehend. Then, Helen struggled with misophonia. That means they were super sensitive to certain sounds like chewing, coughing, sniffing, or pencil tapping. Of course, their aversion got extreme in school where these sounds were practically everywhere. Sadly, this earned them even more bullying. 
And lastly, around junior high, Helen discovered they were pansexual and wanted to be identified as them. They also started dating another girl. For Susan, this was a moment that broke Helen a lot. Helen wanted to keep the relationship a secret as they were afraid of more bullying, but their girlfriend and classmate outed her gender, orientation, and relationship to everyone they knew. That made Helen less confident and less trusting of others. They developed anxiety, depression, and an eating disorder. Helen would also later be in an emotionally relationship with someone they met online, a traumatic experience that they frequently referenced on social media. Isolated from classmates, Helen sought comfort at cosplay conventions. Cosplay is short for costume role play. It's a chance to escape the real world for a few days, put on your favorite character's costume, and act like them with like-minded people. Helen enjoyed this a lot especially in the company of their friend Bailey. Bailey said, Helen was drawn to the escapism of it. Some people view it as an escape from reality. They're not a human, they're this character. For three days, they don't have to think about what's going on in the outside world. It's just what's happening in the convention halls. So for Helen, it was almost a therapeutic experience an opportunity to escape a life that didn't make them happy anymore. They would do Car Cat from Homestruck and Mystery Girl from Steven Universe and post themselves on Instagram and the TikTok precursor Musical.ly. Soon, they would amass a fair number of followers and attract cosplay fans and other cosplayers in Houston. But Susan wasn't so happy about this, especially as most cosplayers were significantly older than Helen. But in the end, Helen's love of this newfound community helped their mom relax. Helen was in 10th grade when she met Mary Ann Olive Snow, who was five years older than her. They also identified as non-binary and were into cosplay. In fact, they were one of the most famous cosplayers in Texas, known online as Yandere Freak, AKA Yandere Snow, AKA Snow the Salt Queen. Snow had amassed 1.6 million followers on TikTok, and they were particularly liked for their cosplay of Junko, a character from Danganronpa, a Japanese video game in which teens are locked inside a school with a murderous bear and forced to fight to the death. Junko often oscillates between cute sweetness and wishing to inflict pain and suffering on the entire world. Most cosplayers will tell you there's no connection between reality and the fiction they're embodying but perhaps in Snow's case, a faint line could be drawn between the two. Their very username, Yonder, is a character trope in Japanese dating sim games, known for being sometimes affectionate and other times, well, murderous. Many people who knew Snow said that they took their love for Junko to an unhealthy level. On their Instagram bio, Snow referred to themselves as IRL Junko and Oshima, and they were known to be highly possessive of the character, criticizing anyone else who cosplayed as Junko. Snow also thrived on stirring controversy. One friend known as Lace said, they had this it factor. They were fabulous, very outgoing, but they had a dark side. They were the type of person that you can't trust. There was something off about them. I did not feel they were a safe or sane person to be around. Snow was petty and vengeful. After a breakup, Lace barred Snow from a panel. Snow then reported the 18 plus panel saying that they'd seen a child in attendance. Things like this were not surprising when you hung out with Snow. Even if you didn't, they still appeared in the latest gossip one way or another. In January 2019, Snow posted a video of themselves as Junko posing provocatively on a gravestone. The post earned Snow a great deal of backlash on social media, but they loved this. In fact, Snow used this to earn their brand as an edgy cosplayer, leading some to refer to them as Graveyard Junko. Another friend of theirs and Helen said, Snow has always been someone who leverages controversies and calls out into public. The way they will wait out the drama and use that notoriety to make themselves even more known and possible. Snow responded with a TikTok post, on paper apologizing, but in fact, they were complaining and insulting the backlashers. Snow was notoriously controversial. They would take real blades at conventions when real weapons were never allowed, 
or appear covered in real hypodermic needles when impersonating Toga from My Hero Academia. They would also stir actual fights with other people who attempted to play Junko, as if they'd bought all the rights to the character. Several people in Snow's circle called them toxic, and yet they had a large circle of cosplayer friends, many of whom shared their home. In the summer of 2020, Helen was spending a lot of time with Snow. They were also getting ready for their first semester of college. They would soon leave the family home, Susan and Philip knew, but they didn't expect Helen to move where they moved. Two weeks before starting school, Helen moved in with Snow and their friends on the outskirts of Houston. It was a rundown house filled with animal waste and moldy food. It smelled bad, looked bad, and was beyond messy. But Helen really wanted to move away from home. According to their friends, they weren't on the best terms with their parents. Susan, on the other hand, says Helen was, in fact, careful not to get them sick. This was happening amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, and both their parents were high risk. Susan was not a fan of snow or their dilapidated home, but she encouraged her daughter to become an independent adult. She also secretly was hoping that Helen would find a new community of people at Oberlin College and move on from Snow's toxic group. But Snow wouldn't allow Helen to move on. It wasn't just Susan who had their doubts. Helen's friends, including Bailey, were just as suspicious of Snow. When Bailey visited Helen at their new home, she noticed that Snow and their friends were always intoxicated or at least on one substance. Another friend noticed how Snow's crew would often switch between several identities during their parties and sometimes become violent with each other as a part of a role-playing game. She even wondered whether these people suffered from DID or dissociative identity disorder and were masking this as role-play. Shortly after midnight, on January 17th, 2021, Helen, Snow, and five of their friends were drinking vodka, Dr. Pepper, and Coca-Cola at Snow's home. Then they decided to put on the TV show Gotham. Suddenly, Snow said they had a gun, just like Penguin. Snow then unveiled a Glock. According to Snow's testimony, the group of friends would play with the Glock fairly often as they thought Snow's ex had removed the bullets in the magazine before he left. Usually they'd fool around with it for a bit and put it back in its case, but this time they were extremely drunk. After a few hours of playing with it, one of Snow's housemates asked Snow to pretend to pull the trigger at them. Snow complied and they were convinced the weapon was unloaded. Just then, Helen said, oh, do me. Snow then placed the Glock on the left side of Helen's head and fired. Helen fell to the ground, to the shock and horror of everyone who was watching. Helen's panicked friends ran to get something to stop the bleeding, deciding on a large teddy bear, and Snow ran upstairs to get a towel and called 911. It was a freak accident, the friends told the officers when they arrived, but it was unclear, and still is to this day, how exactly the weapon fired in the first place. One of Snow's housemates told the detectives that they saw Snow taking the clip out before they started playing with it. Snow said that they did this so no one gets hurt, and they didn't remember how the clip got back in. Snow also said they did not believe that they put the magazine back in the gun, but they may have done so without thinking about it because they were really, really drunk. Helen's mother believes it was a drunken accident, but disputes one fact that Helen would offer to play victim in that deadly game. Other people who knew and loved Helen see a darker scenario here. In other words, Snow might not have wanted Helen dead, but her toxic, violent personality would have claimed a victim one day or another. The tragic story could end here, but unfortunately it doesn't. Mary Ann Oliver Snow was arrested and charged with manslaughter. However, they were released on a $20,000 bond with an ankle bracelet and are free to this day. What's more, they continue to post on TikTok and Instagram. Just a month after taking Helen's life, they began posting cosplay videos again. They never mentioned Helen in any of her videos, even though the reality of their death was public by then. Snow's own family found out about this from the news, not from Snow. Of course, Snow faced another wave of backlash from people saying they were disrespecting Helen and showing no remorse. However, Snow's attorney said they are extremely remorseful and traumatized by what had happened. The attorney also commented that Snow had received no psychological counseling and is struggling to cope with their actions. 
Snow's silence about Helen, to their family and online, is a sign that they're not ready to talk about this. But for others, it's a sign that they were a toxic, volatile person who sucked Helen into a dangerous life they would not have otherwise chosen. If convicted, Snow will face anywhere from 2 to 20 years in prison. To commemorate their life, Helen's friends campaigned to have Oberlin plant a pink dogwood tree on the lawn of Burton, the same color Helen had dyed their hair. In July 2023, Snow came back with a wave of cosplay posts after making their accounts private following the backlash. Have they moved on? Have they already forgotten Helen? Or is this their way of coping with taking their best friend's life? And will they ever face justice for it? Hey, thanks for watching. Do you think Snow should face any punishment for unaliving Helen? Leave a comment, and before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time.